The scene is set at Dragonstone Correctional Rooftop, uh, where uh, Gabriel Schmidt, Ulrich Stark, and Marcosius are currently discussing things. Uh, Yun Dunsern has also been invited. He is expected to arrive in a few moments uh, with a limousine provided. Or maybe with his own. Who knows with the Giovanni? Uh, however. Okay. Gabriel, Ulrich, good to you. This is going to want to be one of those conversations with the two of us I think you're going to like, Ulrich. Oh. Now, when you say this, that normally means I've either got a business deal or I've got someone to punch in the face. Why what not both? Oh, want to have it, Rick? No. Oh. Thank you. My coaches, but there's a table with rings on it. My now, let's get to the business at hand. Hmm. I have a feeling we're a bit on the free agent side with the... I currently, by my own recognition, don't hold any specific Camarilla titles. The Claw of the Gangrel is Camarilla recognized as a hand, but that's second in command in the clan itself, and somebody wants it, fine, let them have it. I didn't get that title by being that title. I got it by being me. Lady Orchid, when she announced herself prince, announced me as one of her hounds, but she, as I pointed out to Mr. Stanshope last night, no one from her administration came to talk to me. I'm not doing jack shit anymore without getting something out of it. And she didn't have a nice opening start by insulting the entire clan, as well as several of my friends. So... Now, if she grabs me half the city's on main for a hound, I'll, I'll be the best damn hound she ever wanted. But as it currently stands, I'm not impressed. And uh, I got some technology that Dragonstone Security doesn't get to use too much because it's, uh, it's above board security company. It's uh, all nice and tidy. It doesn't go out of its way to do stuff. I've been missing some parts of my previous life. I'm thinking I'm going to put up a third company. Fell Spectrus, actually. Gabriel came up with the idea. The this will be a small sized corporation specializing in aggressive security. We are the guys who will watch your back as a kindred for, say, from airport to your haven and guarantee your security. But however, we'll expect to get paid in real money. Yeah, booms, maybe booms. Large amounts of money, materials, whatever. Not anymore this being at the back and call of Ventru bullshit. Yeah, I agree with that, but you know I don't care for money or things, but if it pisses off the venture, I'll do it just because it pisses <laughs> off the venture. Have you officially accepted the position as hounds under the current administration? She gave me the same speech at Elysium that she gave you. I have no she idea. She didn't give me any speech at Elysium. She sent it out over this... Oh, uh, that's the one. I get com a computer I'm thing. Like these things, Gabriel. You know, I don't care for technology or when something's Elysium, when something's spoken and when something's... But anyway... I don't know. Do I want to be a hound? Do I want to be getting involved in other clans' personal shit because they can't keep their shit together and they've fucked up the masquerade, which is pretty simple to follow? Yes, and then then when the bat roll into town, they're going to want you to be on the front lines. And for what? Well. Like, like I said, I'm thinking that it's time to start sh saying what's in it for me. And in this case, I'm thinking we could be saying, what's in it for us? Two decades as a hound has given me enough experience to be able to keep the, ma the traditions in fucking check by myself. I can also cover up things if I need to that other people fuck up if needed. But this... No. No, it's a bit of scrap anymore. So, what do you think, Ulrich? Any interest? Hmm. I think I'm in. 
Uh, also, you're talking about pissing off the Ventru. How embarrassing is it going to be that the two, the of all the hounds, the only two hounds, both Gangrel, that she specifically named, after not naming either of the two Gangrel sheriffs, neither of them are lifting a fucking finger. That's embarrassing. Well, the fact that I've got to go and do it, well, if we had taken on the role, we'd have to take on the one of the eldest vampires in this city as our first task. I don't want to try and touch that. Hey, we can do it. What's in it for us? If you want to try and take on that mad viking, feel free. I am. If they to... put up a good enough price, we'll come with anti material rifles, blow off his kneecaps and him at the elbows, and we'll drag him in front of the prince if she's willing yeah. to pay the right prices. Payment and hey, if the prince wants us to do something, it's just a question of payment and protection from prosecution for doing it. Hmm. Now, Marcosius has invited another gentleman to come speak with us. I know you don't particularly uh, care for his clan, but business is business. Oh, come on. Mr. Dunshirn is one of the most likable people in this city. He is. He's one of the nicest Giovanni I've met. Gio, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why didn't you tell me the damned Italians were coming? I'd have put on some a suit. Scots, yeah. to be precise. Ah, even worse. Please, I trace my lineage, at least according to a certain person from who got paid a lot of money by an African dictator to the Scottish royal lineage. I'm not, I'm not asking you to become his best friend. However, both myself and Marcosius, I'd say it would be reasonable to say we count him as a friend. If failing that, Marcosius, and I imagine you'd at least consider him an ally. So if he could be cordial. But, hey, if they... I'll leave Marcosia sound them out, but if the Giovanni are looking for aid for the right price, we can be the ones who receive that fat paycheck. And if we declare ourselves as independents, we'll no longer have that um, pesky contract between the Camarilla and the Giovanni to worry about. We can get boons from them and we can give them boons. Although I'm not too keen on giving them boons. But if they're willing to pay in boons, that's alright too. We'll see. We've got to see what they say. Oh, while we wait for the gentleman to show up, there's one thing I wanted to bring up. That Blood... Is... Actually, two. Blood bonds, number one. I'm thinking we want to get a tight knit group going. I know Gabriel and I are, I already share one. I'm considering first or second level. This is open discussion you guys get to voice up as members of the group, whether or not. But if you get trusted status, I'd suggest everybody binds in. Not Always a big fan of blood bonds. It does lead to those more monstrous natures of the bat. But, but this is one of the things I was talking about with Marcos. Anybody who gets, we can hire people as consultants if we need them. But anybody who's going to be a permanent member of the company who has a say, who gets you know a stake in things, equal who's pay. Again, equal pay. Anybody who's going to be joining into that, every existing member must agree. If we're having somebody join in. And you, like if the two of us think it's a great idea, and you are one of the members who are in there, and you disagree with it, they're not getting in. We can keep hiring them as consultants if we need be, but they're not getting into the inner circle, so to speak. If we hire on somebody else and they get accepted into the inner circle of it, they have equal rights in that account, the same as the rest of us. So we, we will be keeping this to professionals. We're not going to have a bunch of fuck ups joining in. They would just, we might take them on as consultants for, you know, a few jobs, see how it works out. If not, but I think even on that count, we're going to be, we're going to have some discretion. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea, actually. I mean, not particularly opposed to, not particularly liking this blood bond idea, but eh, you've explained it in a good enough term. It's not going to be any of that vehicle and crap. I don't have any love for the Sabbat no. or their metas. This, that is, this is just so that. When you're in a middle of a shitstorm, 
you know that the guy next to you is going to be risking themselves to get you out too. Hmm. Well, I just have it's part of the reasoning why the about to the them, but they have a whole crazy religious thing going on with it too. Not too big of a fan of that. No. Consider it the blood oath. Mm. Can do that. At least it forces someone to be honourable then. Well, at least it forces people to agree. Two things. <sighs> I wonder if Mr. Dumsern's on his way already. At this moment, the gentleman will notice that the elevator, which leads up from the car park, has just departed the ground floor and is making its way up. I think that's him. As the door opens to the roof of Dragonstone Correctional, Marcos goes, Mr. Dumsern, good of you to come by. Uh, you get to see the uh, uh, correctional facility. You actually own almost half of it. Ewan takes a walk out of the elevator. He's in his standard suit, but is wearing, instead of a shirt, he's wearing a white t-shirt for some reason. And he is carrying his trusty walking stick <laughs> as he makes his way across. Gentlemen, uh, it's been a while. Ewan, have you met my um, my brother Ulrich? I don't believe I have. We have Ulrich. the uh, same sire, and I was his foster sire in the city here for a little while, finishing his training. I see, I see. Well, pleased to meet you, Ewan Dunson. Ulrich Stark, at your service. Ah, Ulrich Stark. Ewan says committing the name to memory. I will uh, be sure to remember. So, uh, gentlemen, to what I owe the pleasure? Well, first of all, I recall you've been for a time wanting to have a chat with me. We've been having scheduling issues with that. Mm. I yes. thought maybe a new opportunity would be needed to entice you out of that nice little mansion of yours. <laughs> you know, it's not really mine, but, well... Anyway, I actually did want to speak to you, and is it a business matter? Is this a social gathering? Uh, let's call it a little bit of both. Business first, social next. Well, if you're happy with business, then I know Gabriel here is a trusted confidant. I trust uh, this other lad I can discuss these matters in front of, too. Uh, Gabriel and Ulrich have both just... Uh, Let's just say they have my utmost trust at this time. Well, it is your business. So, Ewan tosses the, the golf club from hand to hand playfully. Uh, oil. <laughs> oil, oil, oil. Black gold, it's a big part of my family's trade these days. When the economy went south... And he smiles up at the sky for a moment. <laughs> someone made an awful lot of money. Ah, yes, someone, some certain, group, certain groups of people profited greatly from it. Who could have orchestrated such a thing? Someone who controls many banks, I imagine. But when these disasters happen, there are winners and there are losers. And the winners, to the winners go the spoils. Just like a certain... Mr. Richards and his predilections of destroying various structures <laughs> to many people a hindrance to many people uh, a disgrace, an environmental disaster in fact our own uh, cousin in Pentex I don't imagine was too chuffed with the Endron facility being expunged but to others an opportunity particularly to others with uh, various clay built facilities at their disposal I am given to understand that the oil contract is going to be finding its way into my also oh delicate embrace. And when it does, I'm going to be very much prepared to exploit that. And my good fortune is everyone's good fortune, as you know. I am such a insidious octopus known to thrust his tentacles out into anywhere I can stick them. So I will... Um, be thrusting one in your direction, my good friend. I will be contracting the security of the oil rig and associated industry. 
whether or not you are the sole contractor in the city, I can't say at the moment, but you're the only one I'm aware of. I think there was Dusker, but I think the uh, There is actually a Tremere Institute, a Tremere organisation. This would be Enclave, I understand. Yeah. Well. Enclave Security, yes. I, I would um, actually have had the pleasure of seeing some of their people already. I have met uh, Mr. Thorne. I believe he was the man. Yes. Well, that notwithstanding, I did want to tip you off uh, that this opportunity will be forthcoming. With the city guidelines and the fact that we no longer hold the office of mayor, which I believe has been replaced with some form of lackey council type thing, I will uh, maybe encounter more trouble with them. Um, pushing a certain contract through on city interests as I normally would, but if I can I will nudge it in your direction. However, I did think that given that you are possibly the most well known and most well equipped provider of private security services in the city, that this would be a great opportunity for you to profit at least to some extent. You know, Dragonstone Security can craft a very solid offer for the technological side of the security at the very least. Mm. Cost plus 10% sounds awfully fair. If that's your bet. Oh, I that's, bet. Uh, that's going to be a little bit below the... Well, it'll be a bit more expensive because the costs will be a bit more. It'll be a little bit cheaper because I'm not taking the inordinate amount of profit out of it. Oh, I am uh, I'm sure that we'll all make our, our mark in the industry. And I, if you need to get the, uh, shall we say, the kind side of things flowing smoothly, you could perhaps contact the Enclave Security to actually provide the manpower for the operation. I understand they might be a bit more better handled to better equipped to handle uh, let's say boots uh, boots well asses on seats. Worst case scenario, I suppose, if Marcosis is putting in that kind of a bid. Worst case, it might force them to. Uh, bring down whatever quote they're going to give you. And you get to fuck over the Tremere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come now. <laughs> it's not fucking them over. I'm sure they'll still make sure they have a nice profit margin, just not necessarily as fast as it would have been. Everyone that should benefit from my good fortune. <laughs> yeah. I let that be a lesson to you that um, when people benefit from your good fortune, they tend not to want to destroy it. So... It's not just my industry, it's everyone's industry, you see. And in this way, uh, everyone who is involved in it will have a vested interest in it not being blown up by some stray individual. I trust we'll be on the lookout for anyone of that nature. Oh, but I have a few names in mind already. Well, that was the first thing. The second one... You want a steal of muffin, John? Damn it, get back to work, Bob. <laughs> I must say, your staff are very attentive, but I don't think that would go down too well for me. I must say, when when I am extending into other realms, I do think that, particularly with what has happened in the past, it is perhaps a good idea to um, secure any business venture. There are a couple of more things. If things with the oil rig and associated industry don't particularly go to plan, but I do like this idea of, of a cartel of, of companies rather than a single one operating that keeps everyone happy, shuts the vent through up perhaps. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the private school, it will be attended, to my understanding, from 
cousin Oz's wonderful political contact by various well-to-do citizens and their children, obviously, um, from up and down the state and around about. And I understand several prominent family members are sending their, their kin to be, I guess, they can see how far someone so young can rise so quickly and think perhaps they want to learn something from the gaffer himself. Well, this would need to be a secure facility. It's obviously a smaller scale operation, but would give access to some extent as security provider to the individuals with whom our head teacher and associated administrators will be dealing with. Admittedly, we would be looking forward to giving a VIP level of security and everything possible. I see you understand very well, but and of course for, for your benefit, for your benefit, it would be the sense that you would be protecting the children of some very very powerful kind and. Uh, that can make them very amenable to persuasion. <laughs> uh, that may or may not have been my idea all along, but uh, as you know, I do so love taking care of people's family. Uh, and one more thing, a project which I am not currently naming because it steps on way too many toes, <laughs> but this project, as it is being called, will require a particular brand of security also and I will maintain communication with you on that score. I don't know how established Enclave are, but I don't know if they would be equipped to cover all three contracts in any sense, no. both in terms of manpower or know-how and equipment, but we will see. Well, the Dragonstone Security can absolutely provide technology, probably for all of your contracts. Enclave uh, has a reputation, well, not a reputation, but let us say that Dragonstone Security and Enclave Security have an understanding that Dragonstone Security seeks to provide more for the above board security reasons with a little bit higher costs and a little bit higher levels of security. Competition is yes. good to keep you sharp. Or, uh, well, <clears throat> sharing the pie is good to keep you fed. Indeed. A monopoly between four people is so much better than a monopoly between one. It does draw the ire of various and, official bodies. And actually, this might be the perfect opportunity for me to take up something uh, quite you might find interesting. I've noticed that I want to found a third company. Cell security, which will be providing all those little things I always get asked about, Dragonstone security, and I have to go. It's a kind business that provides above board security. We are technological specialists. We do not get involved in that kind of thing. Now, for fell security, I have in mind. No, no, fell spectrus, that's the word. Gabriel coined it. Fell Spectrus. Uh, it has the stated business intent of limiting us into a very small group. And let's just say that the first thing, and probably the last thing, after we get all the intel we need for a job, is what's in it for us. A man after my own heart. <laughs> I got uh, admittedly homesick, and I decided that it's time to get go back to the roots for myself. I'll, of course, leave the Dragonstone security running and can possibly negotiate or advise on the contracts Dragonstone security will take. I seem to have a little bit of pull in the corporate structure still, something to do with being the sole owner. <laughs> but the... Uh, Fell Spectrus is indeed intended to be the closest thing you can imagine of a great kindred private military corporation in the first world. Tell me, did you add this spectre part of it to, to draw me in with talk of... No, I just thought, fell something, fell, because 
we all know who's going to be in charge, regardless of what way we try to organize such a thing, but Spectre it shows that we can be discreet, we can be menacing if needed. Sounds a bit like a Bond villain to me, but still... But that's part of the appeal! I see. Don't you know, well, Bond? I think that that is a visionary move, particularly in the current climate. People will be worried about their havens, about their security during the day, about... Oh, good grief. You want technological security? Ash Dragon Zone security? You want some boots on the ground? Get a retainer or two? Uh, buy Dragonstone security patrol guard to drive by at some point. You want us? You're paying by the minute, and I assure you, getting a retainer and paying them will be cheaper on the long run. However, you need your arse oiled out of a fire, then we're just about the right price. Do you think things are getting a little bit hot? You pick or up you'd like to negotiate the deal? Do you think the next 24 hours is going to be difficult? And my interest in this is what? I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm thinking that uh, your family might, at, on occasion, have a need for some additional security in that I see. area. So I'm the first to get the pitch. Fantastic. Well, you and you are a friend, of course. But you understand that everyone loves us so so much. <laughs> Yeah, well, kindred are always fickle. It's always good to. I did my I job also so well. Try and get you into a, any contracts at this time. I'm just informing you first upon uh, possibilities. And what would the camera stance be upon providing security to Giovanni Havens? Uh, allow me to give my stance on whatever the camera stance might be. Are they paying me to not to provide security? What is the harm? You're beginning to sound like a cousin to me. Is this... Uh, are you about to reveal to me that your second name was done some all along and <laughs> you were... I know, but... Well, I'm sure we get invited over to the family roof, so to speak, at that point, but sadly, <laughs> unless Marcos is about to surprise me as well. Uh, I assure you that, to my knowledge, my only connection I have with Scotland is somebody who was very wealthy to find a connection between me and one part of Scottish royal family. Well, we were very friendly with the Gangrel back home. I don't know if you're aware of this fact. The, the Gangrel were, uh, generally speaking, a Welsh bloodline over there, but uh, the, the Fianna who were there many, many moons ago... Uh, the gangrel and had very nice affinity together. They, they tended not to, to bother, but my family were always uh, interestingly involved with the both the Garu and the gangrel there. Not that that ended well, of course, for anyone involved, but the gangrel and the Dunson that tend to maintain a certain level of cordiality. It's well known that my family have a certain affinity for the beast, <laughs> as well as uh, other things. Yeah, I was uh, actually, for the moment, I have no interest to go marching uh, out of insects. I'll just be pointing out that whatever fell Spectrus provide is provided on contract, and we really couldn't care less who it's provided for as long as all the contractual terms are fulfilled. If Lady Orchid wants to employ us, I have no problem with that. If Primogen Lysander wants to employ us, you know. I see. Well, politically That's speaking... how a mercenary organization is supposed to run. Politically speaking, right now, maybe not your best move, but, well, that's your own asses. <laughs> yeah, well, I get a feeling that... There's an awful lot of people who see the gang real as, you know, foot soldiers. Well, I reckon if I'm going to be delegated to a foot soldier, I might as well get paid very, very well. To be fair, it was a view boosted by the acceptance of the Praetorian Guard positions when 
Mr. Wolf was still present. The Praetorian Guard got things. The Praetorian Guard were given certain privileges, as was the Gangrel as a whole. The Praetorian, Praetorian Guard, Guard were armed and equipped by, by my very own cousin. <laughs> <laughs> the Praetorian Guard were compensated. Would they, but would, they would do they, not seem to have been... Like, like, like many things, the money seemed to magically find its way back to the, the, the pockets of your pal here. So, I, I fail to see what exact profit there was. In fact, when, uh, when Wolf was, was finally dragged down, it oh. seems this may have been one of the one of the one of the moments in which your reputation was uh, particularly blurred and blackened. Oh, I allow me oh. to point out something. Uh, my contract, for instance, as a Praetorian Guard member, was made with one Prince Wolf of Camarilla. Oh, I Prince see. Prince Wolf was perfectly well, fine, and healthy. I do, however, uh, <laughs> I do, however, understand that Baron Wolf had the unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, mishap with something wooden. On the subject of clearing the record on a few things, if you remember that there was an instant with Nathaniel Richards getting his throat around the sen- uh, his hands around the Seneschal's throat. Mm. During that period, the Prince Pro Tempore did not approach any of the Primitive Guard to be present. In fact, no Gangrel was present at that meeting. We weren't even informed of it till afterwards. Mr. The Primitive Richards. Guard did their job well when they were allowed to. I might understand that Mr. Richards hurt the Seneschal. It is unfortunately uh, the case. He, I don't think there was any permanent damage. Uh, he was apparently trying to just provoke the incident into a flame. I believe there was no... Unfortunately, there was no permanent harm done to anyone. You don't have to still be looking for this man, do you? Uh, as long as he's out of the city. Oh, uh, uh, let me rephrase that. I was actually speaking from an old mindset of hey, clan and so on. Uh, am I being paid hmm. to look this person? Not at this time. He once more faked his death quite well. That's why I was contracting beforehand. I'm. Fairly certain he hasn't met final death, and I'm fairly certain he has left the city. I doubt with the amount of attention he was receiving previously, he'll want to return anytime soon. If he does, that blood hunt is still active. I don't think there was a time limit put on it. But I'm not sure exactly where he is. You just smiles at you. If okay. he were to find out his presence in the city, well. I'm certain that any prince would be very, very interested of people who have a tendency to blow up things. Oh, there's, uh, there's no distance you can run to out, outrun your past, particularly when you make the wrong kind of enemies. Yes. It's always unfortunate to have enemies who still alive. I'm sure Richards knew there were going to be consequences for his actions, just because he didn't anticipate them all. That's not my problem. Well, going back to the matter at hand, <laughs> if I feel my my latest arrivals, I have various individuals who at the moment are uh, living incognito, I guess, to some extent. Mm-hmm. And who, to some extent, have not expressed the wish to reside at the fantastical palace which I <laughs> seem to have inherited. Uh, I don't know why, it's got a nice building. But if I feel their safety is in danger, I'll be sure to call upon you. But uh, going forward, I think this would be a very, a very profitable enterprise with the Sabbat at the gates. Although we keep saying they're at the gates, I'm starting to think they're not at the gates. They're just sort of they're starting to be looking at the gates meaningfully from far away, going, mm, maybe. They're in Zeus, they're and they've had one or two forays. Oh, we've had uh, the same thoughts in the Gangrel. The, 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 the Sabbat are coming, the Sabbat are coming. Play nice now, Gangrel. Fight them, fight them. Oh, fuck it. And what is exactly is the stance on Mr. Givy? I understand that as yet no attempt has been made. I yeah, well, tried at his location a couple of nights ago. Don't know what they're waiting for. Well, seriously, you know exactly where he is? 
Yep. Do you want Could to share? You, can <laughs> you confirm his location? I can confirm where he was two nights ago. And mm. if we were to continually confirm his location for a few nights? How much blood have you got to spare? <laughs> yeah, good Mr. Dunson, we are standing on a prison. That brings in quite a lot of blood. I see. Well, if the time comes, I have already procured his location once it would be possible to do so again. And the, the method which I utilised is non-invasive. The Sabbat will not be aware that this ritual was performed or how, even if they do have others assisting them, as I've heard. Well, in that case... Uh... Now, I'm not making any promises here, but let's just say it might be a good way for a very uh, intense security company to make a showing of its abilities. Yes, uh, I did mention it with a reason. Perhaps a good way to introduce yourselves. Of course, if we were going on such a thing, we would be mindful to keep an eye out for that indiv individual you described to me before. If they were spotted, no harm doing I a favour for a friend. Uh, I recently spoke with uh, a gentleman you may or may not have heard of. Were you a Giovanni, you would have a, a gentleman by the name of Adamo Giovanni. He is what we call an Anziani. This, to put it bluntly, is a gentleman who has sat in the presence of Augustus himself, and he... Has given me various tasks, one of which is to make it very well known. Uh, I, I tell you the gravity of the, the edict to point out the severity of the reward that may come. If such an individual is found, then brought before us, whether it be their remains or their preferably intact person, <laughs> but intact for how long, eh? then it would be graciously smiled upon, not just by myself, obviously I would receive a big hearty handshake from those individuals looking, but also from further abroad. Venice has an eye on matters when they hear such rumours, and what I cannot provide, you can assure yourself that the Anziani can. It would be wise for anyone encountering this individual to understand just what they stand to gain by being part of the family's benevolent interest. And, of course, that wouldn't just include my own good grace and favour, it would also include that of the core body of the family. I'll, I'll not commit to anything, but let's just say I think it might be a, a worthy opportunity for the FS to make a scene, a show of force. And uh, it'll take some time to get all T's and crossed and I's dotted but for the functioning of the corporation itself. Company, let's call it that way. I had considered Samir as a friend to the family in this city. I had considered making a move. Even figured out how I was going to do it, but... Unfortunately, I was leaned on the, the hierarchy of the family cannot risk inflaming the situation. We are committed to our stance, however. Contractually bound to certain restrictions. Uh, yes, and those restrictions appear to manoeuvre depending on who I'm speaking to, but... It's it's just one of those situations that I'm afraid I have to live with. And but 
I do have a way <laughs> that Mr. Givy could be taken out of Zuster without being taken out of Zuster, but he would be beyond the reach of anyone, effectively, other than people who I might be able to have arranged to be waiting on the other side of that doorway. <laughs> uh, this it would just be a matter of figuring out how to get the damn thing there without going myself. I think in, I think we can come up. Uh, uh, are there some certain measurements on this thing? You would ponder for a moment. How Wait and size, I'd say. How private are we right now? We are on a rooftop that has seen one meeting between Clan Gangrel and nothing else. I see. Well. Ewan ponders for a moment. Perhaps a demonstration. <sighs> you have no idea how much this hurts. He bites into his wrist. <sighs> and he slaps his wrist down on the ground and proceeds to draw a square around himself in blood. Ah. <sighs> ah. Oh. Never gets easier. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me for a moment, he turns his golf club upside down and he puts the head in the middle of the square and he pushes. And then disappears through the square. And after about 30 seconds or so, you see a hand coming through, and another, and then he pulls himself back up. Oh. God, it smells like shit in there. Anyway, what you have just witnessed, my friends, is me hurting myself quite a lot, and... Needing a drink? Oh, it's that just the one. over a... You and absolutely necks it within about three seconds. Oh. Mm. Oh, it's difficult to heal that. I really should have just used the Stanley, eh? Anyway, but I had to demonstrate my faith. Sometimes it's uh, pleasing to others to inflict pain. Well, I'm, what you've just witnessed is a, a ritual by the name of Ex Nihilo, by which such wonderful chaps as myself can step through the curtain onto which all the shadows are cast. Shadows like ourselves. And step onto the other side. A realm which has various names. Which I shall not utter here, he says ominously. But we have our ways of transporting ourselves. It is not often wise to linger there long. But if I can get someone in, I can get them out. You understand? It exists parallel to where we are now. Uh, would someone from your family besides yourself be able to do this if they were safely escorted to the area? I know only of one other than me who would have this ability. For certain. But it would be a bloodless and easy way to get the man out. Our thought was that perhaps if the gateway, which is now mysteriously vanished incidentally, if the gateway could be put onto something portable, then it could be opened from the other side. You see... A rug, for instance? If I could make myself endure the journey, it could be that if such an individual could place the item near him, I could take him through, you see?
So he would only have to be extracted, moved to the item, and then we would only have to extract ourselves instead of racking a possibly badly damaged his, individual around. Depending on his disposition, it may be that this could be done without arousing the suspicions of the Sabbat at all, which was why I found it an interesting theory. Such a thing's never been tested, you see. Uh, the problem with that would be getting the item to him, and well, if it's light, something that could be folded up. We had somewhat. we had thought masquerade friendly, perhaps butcher paper or something that would normally be coated in gore, but also something that could be folded out to be large enough for a man to fit through wholesale. I'm not thinking, well, something a man for the culture, but for carrying it discreetly, depending on what way we go about this, paying, if we were to go about this, and to discreetly, you do know my, our clan's penchant for shape-shifting. Indeed. And you would be surprised at how strong Gangrel and bat form can be. If it could be brought to him, and if he could be convinced to at least be near it in a secluded area where I could reach through alone. I could theoretically take him through the gateway. If this could be managed, then we would have him back, bloodless, and they would have no idea where this pesky wizard disappeared off to. Mm -hmm. However, whether or not this theoretical application of necromancy would be successful is at the moment untested. I don't believe this has been tried. The gateway is normally static, you see. Uh, well, perhaps... You but I've seen nothing in lore which states that I cannot place a gateway on something which can then be moved. Mr. Stark <coughs> may have just earned himself a bonus. Body bags. They are foldable, easily transferable by a man. Even in a pocket, or at the worst, a uh, backpack. So you're and suggesting some sort of hoodie day trick where he climbs in the bag, zips himself <laughs> up, and then is no longer in the bag? Yes. Why not? It would be uh, a good way to associate the action itself with if the family. If a group of individuals were... The situation was... Difficult when he was being extracted. Could a group of individuals also be um, brought through this portal, this portable portal? Oh, well, you could theoretically, as long as I can keep it open, anyone can come through. But being in the other side of that uh, particular veil is not very safe. Listen. Well, it's actually not too bad, but does smell something rotten you know to right? corporeal beings such as we who have the capacity. I'll, but, uh, I'll you have to understand. You have to understand that uh, in that realm, the the creatures that exist there are very much like those that exist here. Although they can strike you, but you cannot strike them. The only person who'd be able to defend himself to any extent would be myself. So, therein lies the danger. A smaller party is less easy to attack, particularly if I'm going to be forced to attempt a several mile hike. I can maybe defend one guy over several miles, but six, seven? Well, we could establish a point of extraction a little bit outside of the city proper for Zuster. Making the hike a little bit shorter. That would be beneficial. You have to understand the architecture in this other side is not um, necessarily the same as here. At that point, Ewan's eyes glow. He looks around. Ah! He makes his way a few steps forward, jumps up, and clings onto something in midair, and just swings from it. As you can see, there is right now. He kind of pulls himself towards it on one arm. What seems to be some kind of masonry. There's actually a sort of tower here. It's a shame you can't see it. It's really quite grand. 
the architecture sloping down here, magnificent, but I can interact with it, as you saw there. And that would be, there I was thinking after our last meeting you had some kind of telekinesis. Well, I have my ways. Do you mean that this sort of thing, Ewan twirls his golf club for a moment, and the glass from which he was drinking moments ago just come, take, comes out of his hand, floats, o- floats over towards Gabriel. I was more talking about your mid-air chin-ups. I didn't say anything at the time, but you did leave me somewhat perplexed. Well, just because I use one power to do one thing doesn't mean I can do other. Incidentally, you might want to take that class. <laughs> Takes it. It puts his golf club down. Yes. But uh, I think Gish. we could perhaps on the Spectre side take a good hard look at Salster City, what we think can be done this side, and maybe you could, you know, find a test subject and test the extraction method before we're in the in a possible firefight situation. Naturally I am loath to directly commit my family to anti-sabat measures. But oh, we are, uh, the Spectra are being paid to extract a person who is paying, shouldn't matter to anyone else. And if it does, well, that's their problem, not, our, and not ours day. and certainly not our clients. I think communication with the, the gentleman would be important. We have to figure out what what state he's in. For all I know, the the Sabat could be allowing him to wander free right now. Who knows what they've done to the guy. They've had him for quite a while. Uh, I'm thinking he'd be better taken staked and make certain that uh, when he comes to, he's bound and gets to look into somebody's eyes with a sufficient level of dominate. I believe the prince might be willing were it successful oh. that he's brought through. I well, imagine it might, be, yeah. might, be, to give it him might be politically more viable if I wanted to Tremere to do it. They might get have issues with a Ventru doing it. Uh, oh, I Lady don't Orchid or not. You understand that uh, Lady Cantor and Lady Orchid are very close indeed. No. Maybe that she provides her services in the matter. But it may not, but I understand her to be very skilled in the particular discipline to which you refer. Well, if you prefer to handle it politically, I would suggest Mr. Givy is turned over, staked and secure to the Tremere, and we let them decide how he should be treated. Seraphis had indicated that he wanted him to be returned directly to the Chantry. Yes. I don't understand whether or not this was to inflict some form of Inquisition upon him, but that is their want as the clan. Well, uh, well, I would imagine that the Giovanni might have a similar request as far as their own family members go. Whoever extracts them from the trouble. Indeed, I am very understanding of their predilections in this matter. But Samir has always assisted and helped the family, and it would be no good to my reputation to not at least assist to some degree. And I believe I've already been more than helpful, to be quite honest, and I've possibly stepped on a few of my elders' toes were it to be known just how far I've gone. Well, as far as anybody knows, Spectrus would be doing it uh, to show off, to get it collected a little reward from the Tremere, perhaps. It's so sad to me sometimes, you know, because here we are, one of the most ostracised and at times talked about clans in the history of the kindred race, and yet here I stand, the one of the chief upholders of the traditions in this city, one of the chief upholders of the masquerade, as the Ventry themselves were breaking it, one of the people who when everything was blowing up, was trying to rebuild it, trying to get the kind on side with his union plans, everything else, to mm. stop these things from happening. It seems to me I'm almost more Camarilla than some of the others that have come through, but yet mm. the family's reputation remains tarnished in many eyes for some reason. It's well, sad. 
uh, let it be pointed out that I keep hearing from several camera amounts how the Gangrel are very, very good at being foot soldiers. I would imagine that the people saying this for myself in front of me, to me, as a compliment, would, you know, might give a small pause to whom they talk to. Well, there are always those who buck the trend, I suppose, but. <laughs> That's of course why we're here tonight. I Indeed. would have thought when I arrived here that perhaps I would be doing certain things with a gangrel, particular kinds of business, but never to this extent. But where, when I arrived, what did I find? I found yourself, Mr. Fell, who's just a little bit different from your standard. Well, I don't know. I blame my Maybe, maybe like, like Yogi Bear, smarter than the average. Yeah, um, I'll blame my upbringing. <laughs> oh, we're back to that, are we? <laughs> but uh, we'll give it a look on the corporal side. Maybe you can give it a test run. I'm being a very bad member of the camera element. I look at me several decades older than him. But what can I say? I appreciate a keen mind. <laughs> And so uh, he is in church. And actually... The yeah, Anarchs are right about one thing, and that is that age isn't everything. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, which brings up an interesting point. Now, I'm not going to go and upset my clan elders by nilly-willy throwing anything in the wind, because as one of those elders have already put, Camarilla or Camarilla. But should it come down to it, and at some time, fell Spectris decide within that uh, it's better to be fully apolitical? Uh, would I be entirely mistaken that there might be increased business opportunities from certain corners of the world? Hmm. Ewan seems to almost taste this in his mouth for a moment. Much like your Russian friend, a gangrel who <coughs> stays clear of the... What? The, what will we call it? The Yacht Club? <laughs> well, were such a thing to transpire, it would certainly change the playing field somewhat in terms of how directly I can deal with your company's business. And it might be that uh, my family might feel slightly safer that should anyone declare the family to be, as has happened in the past, uh, persona non grata within a given domain or city that uh, the security that was once guarding them wouldn't suddenly be dragging them from their bed. Which, of course, would increase their feeling of safety and, as such, merit a further consideration. Understandable. I protect my family very closely, you understand. And those who have sworn to do so, not all of whom are members of the clan, but if such threats were to come forth that I deem it necessary to protect them, and as I say, I have already spoken to you with regard to several of the interests and in these places may become the havens or domains of members of my family, then it will certainly be a strong consideration of mine, not just the quality of the security, but the political affiliation of said leadership of the structure because I can trust a man who will take my money and do his job. More difficult for someone who will take my money and do his job until the prince says otherwise. It may be that certain alliances can transpire between myself and the prince, but... There is always the risk of the prince deciding that this family is for some reason no longer welcome to do business in such and such area. Well, it remains to be seen how close that tie will be. She well, has been certainly more, let's just say, consistent 
in her approach to rule Feather was. <laughs> ah, on one hand, effectively utilising her aid to rid himself of the Quagin and then asking the Tremere to seize her assets and attack her havens and do these things. They didn't count on a certain diplomat forging certain ties that he didn't anticipate. And now look where he is. I'm terribly sorry I'm having a bit of trouble seeing him in the city. Exactly. Must be the obfuscate. Well, mm -hmm. he obfuscated himself oh so well with his stance. I would suggest that were you politically to have an independent bent in terms of the security, if nothing else, then that company would be certainly more trustworthy to my family, knowing that the orders of the Camarilla structure would not impact on their personal safety, and all they would need is probably a few hours to be extracted from the city by my family to some safe haven, probably Boston. Better, yeah. better to be a soldato in Boston than a pile of ash in New Serum. That's the way I'm looking at it at the moment. Uh, you would uh, much appreciate having uh, extraction plants. I think I've done that kind of a job before. Yes, and well, I'm sure Francis Milliner wouldn't uh, be too chuffed with a whole pile of Giovanni suddenly turning up on his doorstep saying, you know what, I was the dawn of this city and just got thrown out. Well, that would unfortunately be his duty as a family member to deal with. I can always go back home at any point, but there's so much to do here, and you do understand it's in my interest to make sure that throwing me out of this city would be a catastrophe for anyone, especially when they see how deep the tentacles I mentioned before have dug. Alright, I'll be certain that we keep it in the in mind, in one company discusses future contracts. Wonderful. And uh, for the other side of things, Dragonstone Security will continue to uphold its previous agreements. It will continue to act as it has always acted. I'm just leaving a lot more for the CEO to do, taking a little bit of distance myself. Two separate companies with two very different mission statements. Indeed. Tell me, how are your union boys doing? Oh, they can take time. I keep pushing and encouraging. <laughs> but I um, don't want to show the hand too much. But I'm sure they'll fall into line. It's I only recently, been a small um, while. I recently secured quite a lucrative health package with the Milliner family. Uh, I do understand that's now part of the, the union deal. You may want to lay that on the line for them, and especially when the hospitals which um, are providing them with said care may have that as their preferential care package <laughs> at the moment for one reason or another. Who could say they oh, might boy. want to, to lean towards that as an option? It's certainly a lot cheaper than buying it straight out of the Boston Healthcare. I heard the Guards Union's... Uh leader, a certain lady I believe, uh, has a sent a written request to be considered a member. Wonderful. I will check with my administrative staff on that. She's obviously not written to me directly. Why would I give my personal address to such people? But I will be sure to expedite the acceptance of such terms. It's not really difficult, to be honest. It's one of these wonderful things that I've encountered in my youth that's so easy to set up and can do so much for you, and no one really notices it's there until you use it. Oh, I'm certain it'll be very, very interesting. And at some point you might have to actually make a point of it or a point of how beneficial it's to be a member of that structure. Well, I understand I've been able to quell a lot of the mortal sensitivity to various fluctuations in their economic welfare at the moment, but they are satisfied with what they have at the moment, it seems. Yeah. Given the fact that they now have much better packages and much better infrastructure in which to operate. Once their health, their food, their shelter 
is taken care of, these people tend to want for little else. It is a very simple plan, socialism, you see. But <laughs> one that can be very useful if your goal is to get a large body of people to, to band together in one cause. Right. I'll point out that the Spectres haven't yet agreed to do anything beyond taking a good hard look at a map or 20. <laughs> you know, we'll see if it's doable with a given address. Yeah, and maybe with a few people. I don't think we're going to be advertising it in any way, form or function. I see. It, too many people too many people have talk a lot and do little. I think we might actually try, you know, the reverse. I do have an idea which has just occurred to me. Mm -hmm. Through my business dealings with the family, some less orthodox than others would be, we do extend protection to some individuals, different levels thereof, in fact. It could be that I could bring that, if it is indeed off the books, to the attention of my conciliary, Rodrigo, who when he offers protection to an individual or business, it could be known that these certain off-the-books contracts could find their way to your door. Only thing I gotta ask about any contracts is how much are we making? Of and course, if we're going against certain very powerful or influential people, it'll cost more to the client. Indeed, and that depends entirely on the nature of the client and the nature of the protection which they request and require. Or lack of protection they'd like for somebody else. I see you yes, understand each other. Cardinal staked. We're going to need maybe the East Coast, but hey, <laughs> you get the price. We'll I, can see we I can see we understand each other quite well here. <laughs> Always a Pleasure to talk with you, Mr. Dunson, on the business side. Oh, I'm a good man to know when it comes to that sort of thing. Oh, and I have so much to do, but <sighs> of course, whenever I have an inkling, and at this point you has a twinkle in his eye, I will be sure to contact you directly. Uh, it's been a shame that I've not been able to spend more time, but as you understand, when the Anziani call you and say, I have a mission, <laughs> then I have a mission and I must perform that mission. It wouldn't do to have sixth and seventh generation and uh, occasionally lower family members emerging in my personal haven unexpected. Oh, well, the downside of... Uh being very close-knit family is that grandfather may every now and then pop in and tell you what you need to do. Oh, the man himself is uh, very seldom known to leave his area of Influence. residence, but were he, to, were he to visit these shores, I would certainly be sure to extend my hospitality, <laughs> although I'm not too sure he would accept it. Uh, I think I'd have to accept uh, the fact that I would not be on his list of things to do, but that may be a good thing, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> not necessarily a list you want to be on. Well, we have a fantastic portrait of him, actually, which I was sent. We've hung it in the ballroom. At least that's, I'm assuming that's what he looks like. I've never seen him, but, yeah. you know, I don't think... Um, if I to fly to Venice right now, I'm not so sure I would even be admitted to the second level of the mausoleum, let alone <laughs> that in which the great Mr. Giovanni himself resides. Indeed. Oh, here's a, here's a small question. I understand the uh, Royal Scottish Bank, well, some appellations thereof, is still operating in the city? Maybe. Uh, I was wondering, uh, Fell Investment Group, where to book down a loan request for a few millions? Hmm. I myself am not a particular operative of the bank, 
officially. You and smiles. What would be the nature of the investment? Well, the Bell Investment Group is interested in providing some additional affluence, shall we say, in exchange for uh, possibly a very, very good contract on a loan that will be backed by, let's say, 20% of Dragonstone security stock. In case there's any defaults or such, Dragonstone Security will be the stock that will handle the collateral. Of course, if the fail, if anything were to happen to fail investment, surely Dragonstone would be taken down with it. Is it not a subsidiary of that group? Oh, fail investment group owns stock in Dragonstone Security and Dragonstone Correctional. However. It merely owns stock as a investment company owns stock. It's not a subsidiv uh, subdivision. I see. So essentially you're offering me a fifth of your company in exchange for liquid assets. I am offering to back a loan request with one-fifth of Dragonstone Security, a company that will apparently be very likely providing a, quite a large uh, bid for a contract. Oh, I believe for some oil company or other. Mm, so I've heard this actually, uh, in the wind somewhat. Mm. And where of course you to be well remunerated for such, then that would be a very newsworthy item which would cause such stock to soar, I would think. Hmm. I will advise the board to review this request. Of course, they will require particulars in terms of the value of the shares currently. Um, the portfolio I'll provide them will understandably be leveraged heavily towards hmm, pushing them towards a, let's just say, a positive response, depending oh. on, as long as you're not trying to screw too much money out of them for the value of the shares. Mm, I believe the uh, hard sale values are around 100, 130, maybe 100, what was it, 70 plus 50, 120. 150, the jet would be just the mainly hard assets and the company value in contracts. The you reputation, know. the everything else. You know how these bankers are, they will want to make sure they're getting back more than they're giving, this is my point. Let's say it would be a loan with an insurance rate, a very reasonable insurance rate I hope, and uh, interest rate. And, yes, I understood. Uh, and let's say one-fifth. I believe 30 million would pretty much be on the money even if I were to throw that stock straight into the market, secondary market. Hmm. And you're going to use this money to do what? Well, Fell Investment Group will in turn give that as a loan to a certain trusted person who might own a very large portion of Fell Investment Group also to finance certain necessary applications for... Oh, uh, this new company. I th uh, yes, Fell Spectrus, I think. I see. So this is the starting capital for this. Uh, well, it would be the starting, part of the starting capital. I think Dragonstone Security will be selling some of the high-end material that sees very little use in the Dragonstone Security business, but could be put to very much better use in a more private uh, military organization, perhaps. Yoon's eyes have narrowed here. And of course, Shelling out your old company to fund the new one seems an interesting step. And I guess you don't want 
RBS to have too much of a tasty meat hook dug into the back of a brand new firm, but uh, by shifting the collateral to another company. Yeah, I am shifting the collateral to an established company instead of a new startup in the entity. The old company is affluent, well off, and very likely to be receiving lucrative contracts in the future. And of course, if I was to liquidate that company, I'd probably make back a lot more than I loaned you. You'll probably make back uh, from the... You, I'll dare say you'll at the very least make back what you loaned me. The only thing is I'd prefer to use the loans instead of just letting whoever it might be who'd want a piece of Dragonstone security to actually have the stocks and say in anything that Dragonstone security does unless I fail to uphold my agreement, in which case part of the agreement is they get their money from an established company. Indeed. Because, of course, they wouldn't want to loan 30 million directly to a brand new investor or company. Well, before I put Gabriel and Ulrich to sleep with this financial chat, I will rein it in somewhat, but I will certainly put this proposal to my friends on the board, let's just say, and we will see to it that they give full consideration to your proposal. Here is a manila folder if you'd like to have the actual assets and the request itself. It's been all detailed there. I took the liberty of being prepared. You'll forgive me for not reading it here, but... Oh, no, it's going to be definitely something to read while you're waiting for the sunrise to dose you off. You had to give this to me, didn't you? God. <laughs> hey, give it to who? Give it to the bank side of people, those who have a resistance to sleep or something. See, it's wrong that through all of this discussion back and forth, all I'm thinking of is, can you go into one of those airplane graveyards and sit on the plane and make it fly around so he's flying through the air? <laughs> now that I know that you can see the ghosts of objects or you can manipulate them, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out what, where does this these abilities end? Are you mocking me, sir? No. I am actually seriously thinking, like, how can you manipulate these things? I don't... I'm trying to think of... I had yeah. never considered the possibility. I, I imagine... Can do some wonderful and weird things, both to the dead and the living. And the things that never lived at all, sometimes. <laughs> Ewan tosses his golf club to his other hand again. And so. Oh, I'm teasing you, come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when the Giovanni gets out, I was worried there for a second. <laughs> but no, no, seriously, I'll just... Let's just say that if I'm ever particularly truly angry at you, you will never, ever know. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well... At least you'll die happy. Oh, as a pro. At this point, you and um, pulls Gabriel into a firm bear hug, <laughs> <laughs> laughing as he does so. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, now that I feel as though my head is bogged down in all manner of calculations, which I'm trying to make on the hoof while making jokes at the same time. All I, right, uh, I'll put you at ease. The building's own value. The actual building itself is around fifty million, which is more than the value of the loan. Yes, I'm pretty sure that the board can be provided with the assurance they require to part with this sum. It will, of course, take a while to expedite such funds in this current climate. We did just so use our influence to crash a bunch of banks. Let's not uh, rush with too many to part with money that was provided to them. No, by... but in this kind of a climate, I would imagine that most banks would be 
hard challenge to find new investments. Oh, they, uh, they do so love their little games that they play. But unfortunately, they did tend to personalise their investments just a little bit too much. Let's face it, some of them wanted to run their stocks like they were some kind of global technological casino where they could bet and gamble their imaginary wealth on where everything would go. We take a longer view and a more sustainable view and as such have made an awful lot of money from everything they lost, as you would expect. But I still don't want to push my learned and not so learned friends into investments that may harm their positions when their positions do so benefit us in the long run. And of course, I look forward to a speedy reply from the banking side. Oh, they will, um, they will be given a, a suitable deadline for a decision. But once the money has been expedited to your nominated account, it will be, I'm sure, put to good use. Oh, it'll go... Actually, part of it might just go off back into Dragonstone Security to drive up the value. We do need to buy some of those fancy cars, for instance. And since I'm quite confident that neither side will be making a loss from the transaction... Mm. Which actually says that Dragonstone Security and Fellow Investment Group can be assured that they will be handling the insurance, uh, uh, the interest payments on time for a few months at least. Well, a few years at least. I'd say. I think that the, a loan of that size would be secured over a generous period of time which would allow the interest repayments to be dealt with in due time. Well, call it 50 or 100 as the banking side sees fit. Oh, the board will, I'm sure, have a, a structure for these kinds of loans. I'll see how hard I can lean on it. And please have them forward the exact details over to my end. Oh, I will ensure that they are keeping you fully up to date. Oh, brilliant. Actually, which reminds me, I've taken the liberty of seeing that the second shipment, the Giovanni, collect from this marvelous little fortress of mine, is ready to follow the limousine back to the city. Hmm, marvelous. And I was uh, considering I have a, a long-term thought at the moment, which, to briefly sum up, is to do with urban migration and limiting the shovelhead stock that would be available to the Sabbat. Good news stories coming out of this city are going to be very much what we want. I think that I might just take a lot of that stock and instead of Plumbing it into the usual rent-a-bottle industries that exist currently. Obviously, Stan's hope will take his, his due as he does. It might be worth plunging a lot of that into our hospital services direct. I trust the blood is all catalogued and typed. All catalogued, all typed, doubly checked. At this point, Ewan's taken his smartphone out of his pocket, squints at it as though he's not exactly figured that out yet, starts very slowly typing a text message, which is probably a very short text message, although he takes way too long typing it. Um, oh, right, okay. Yeah, I'll have our boys pick that up, and um, depending on the... Depending on the media controllers at the moment, I do understand the Ventry had their fingers in that pie, but I don't know where it's gone since their, their media man was expunged from the records. <laughs> I, I will would... see who is the man to speak to about saying, what a fantastic thing the union has done to bring about such uh, 
reserves that may be needed for various operations, transplants and such. Oh, that would be actually... Particularly to introduce my new healthcare system and say, <laughs> look, not only are we providing you with healthcare, but we are providing the means for that healthcare to be provided. Sounds like a very reasonable thing. Of course, good news is good news for everyone, and it would look good upon people who may not wish there to be a prison in their city. I do understand it can be a difficult thing to get planning for the event well, about it in the past. Well, they might, we they are... might be more well. They might be more inclined to, to view it with uh, some some joy if they believe that the prison population are even if they are not being fully rehabilitated as cannot be guaranteed for any criminal individual, but that they are still paying a certain debt to society. <laughs> well, they are all volunteering. Indeed. Of course, the volunteering part comes along with having a very good health care for themselves as well. And I understand that uh, none of my lads are currently a guest of yours in here? I don't believe so. Oh, of course, if you have a set, have a list of people who are currently in circulation, so we say. Well, let's and... just say that if we got um, <laughs> if we got certain um, individuals inside, it might be that we could uh, make the prison population more amenable to our um, particular goals for them. Oh, no, no, no. I've found that the prison population is quite happy with a kind side uh, supervision as long as they get good food, good I'm health going. care. I'm and not proposing to introduce um, actual family members to prison. Only if they were running it would they accept such a thing. I'm, I'm referring more to the uh, you know, the, the Picolino, the, the, the people who, for want of a better word, the, the ground troops, the the dealers, the pushers, the, the thugs, those guys, oh. they, may, they might be um, likely to be imprisoned for what they do, um, particularly by someone who maybe might, through various union contacts, tip off certain police forces to certain activities which are expendable and allowing our esteemed colleagues to do their work on the other side of the wall might encourage the, the prison population to encourage um, growth in the gangs which uh, we are policing, so to speak. Oh, the thing here is that Dragonstone Correctional is a maximum security institution and quite frankly we have very little trouble from our inmates. Oh, I'm sure you do, but... Uh, I could assure you that every member of some gangs might be contributing to the blood drives and of course if that gang was to grow in number when these people are cured of their little criminal predilections when they return to the street they might just so be happy to return to the warm and loving bosom of the family which is where of course these people belong and then they can be looked after properly. I will have to give that some consideration. There's a... Well, let's say... I'll give it a few moments. I'm certain that... I can come up with a few things on that side. Perhaps when I'm reading the finalized loan suggestion. I'm not stupid enough to... You know, organized crime is organized because it's organized, isn't it? And it looks bad if the police aren't arresting anybody who's actually doing anything worth noting. <laughs> we do have to offer up our share of flesh for the, you know, the betterment of society, etc. But uh, we do ensure that when these people go in, that they go into another system existing in there, which prepares them to rejoin the ranks in the correct manner and also picks up those who have maybe missed their little filtration system and say you can exist as a petty purse snatcher or you can come and embrace this culture that exists here and become I part would, of a larger whole. I would perhaps bring up this point. Uh, this is a 
very secure location. I dare say that there's been very few mishaps that weren't uh, fated to happen in any case within our system. The gang violence is very low due to the almost minute detail to timetables and such. However, mm. as you're probably aware from your own side of this business, the private prisoners, prisoners, prison companies are fully within their rights to trade <coughs> prisoners to other systems. Indeed. And uh, if you talk with your family, think who would uh, either be a good fit, would know how to, let's say, toe the line as far as this system goes. Maybe I can convince Dragonstone Correction a little bit in their request for their transfer. And if you think there's somebody who needs to be taught to toe the line as Dragonstone Correctional does it. The same thing could happen. And if we wind up getting some of your people who do you prefer to have a little bit more leisure than what we provide, well, maybe we trade them out to some other city. I see we speak the same language in many ways, Mr. Fell. It must again be the lineage. Uh, I will discuss this with Rodrigo, he is the man in the underworld, so to speak, but um, with various happenings and various other organizations seeming to be springing up, I want to make sure that my organization is the one to which the, the, the manpower flows, let's just say. I don't want them to be able to simply pick up any old Tom, Dick or Harry off the street. I want the cream of the criminal body to be coming into our fold, you see. And not just this, but such things as the the shooting of the former mayor, who's a chief political opponent of our mayor, that looked very bad for him, you understand. Some random killing of your main political opponent. It's, uh, although I had absolutely nothing to do with it, which is a true story, by the way, I would say that such a thing did not bode well for Cousin Oz's political aspirations when it was already being subjected to all manner of cries of corruption and foul. So, I have to ensure that gangs that are not controlled in any way by these individuals are brought to the bare minimum and that they do not expose such important individuals to their particular brand of mindless thuggery and that the thuggery is in fact kept to a very organised and um, a portioned level to the people who deserve it, you see. Well, as uh, with Dragonstone Security, Dragonstone Correctional prides itself on being above board and of high technological and security measures, which means most places, most inmates are seen almost 24-7 a year. Well, it does pay to keep an eye on them, but my interest, as I said, is mainly to keep the, the loyalties and the, if you want, the family ties firmly in the minds of those who may be coming back out to to retake their position in the, the wonderful kingdom of well in that crime. case I would suggest we would be best agreed on certain trades from the prison population happening with other prisons depending on if you want somebody to be very safe and can say that they will be behaving very, very well while they're inside, and then again, then be recommended for good behavior for an early release. Indeed, because I can assure you that my boys, while in an establishment, but let's not forget I am 50% in control of, are 45, not to be going mistaken. to be... I'll have to have another look at that contract. Well, <laughs> our, our, our lads will be 
very well behaved in there and making and sure that they are of the full decorum to ensure that anyone passing through is aware of our, our need for further manpower. And of course, if you feel that you have a few family members who are a little bit more rowdy and need a little bit more liberty in what they do, they can be traded to some other facility that provides such opportunities. Yes, I like the sound of that. But that's another talk for another time. No, of course. My mind is so full of <laughs> random ideas most of the time. Well, it seems that a lot of people complain that when they talk, come talk to me with business, I always seem to have one or two good business opportunities more than they expected. What a dreadful thing of me to do to people, isn't it? Oh, it certainly pays off, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I think both of our bank balances reflect that. Well, anyway, I shall, um, I shall have to extract the shipment. Um, I hope you don't mind if I step out. Oh, not at all. The Dragonstone Correctional Corps and the Dragonstone Security Escort for it are waiting to follow you through. Marvellous. I will be hosting various individuals at uh, the golf club, the old Ivy, which we've acquired. Uh, if you guys ever fancy around, feel free to give me a bell. Until then... I will leave you both in the grace and favour of the Lord. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. And Ewan steps back onto the elevator and makes his way out. Well, what did you think of that, Gabe? Went pretty well. Well, he wants a few more people inside to make certain that the right material gets to his street organisation. Well, the man sees opportunities. That's perfectly fine. Well, as long as he realizes that if there's any dissent in the ranks, order will be restored. He assured you his gentleman will behave. Now, it's for the best. As far as the other thing go, I strongly suspect that the mangrove for Fell Spectrus has been successfully made. And since Dragonstone Security Building probably will be the collateral itself, should the Payments totally flunk and everything go to hell. Hmm. Well, the way I count it, Dragonstone Security can pretty much pay the loan off on its own profits. Let's go downstairs. I'm pretty sure we've got to have a map of Zusta around here somewhere. Oh, I might have a few. <laughs> Time to give that some serious, serious thought. Uh, shall we bring the scene to an end?